Here are the top paying jobs according with what the current market is actually looking at. The 10 highest paying A jobs and best salaries of 2024. Machine learning engineer, $109,000 and this is the average salary. We get A engineer, $160,000. We get data scientist, computer vision engineer, $168,000. NLP engineer, deep learning engineer, $141,000. AI research scientist, $115,000. Business development manager, $196,000. AI product manager, $128,000 and a consultant $125,000. I mean, how do these look? Do they really make sense to you? Because I see all of these programmers, including all of these variations of machine learning engineers being at risk here. Because we have tens of thousands that have already been fired due to these economic conditions and due to the anticipation that AI will actually be able to do their jobs. And with the high interest rates, and we get AI, and we get mass layoffs, I don't really see the market for these jobs to be as big as necessary for so many tech people to get in. Now imagine if all of a sudden, every developer wants to move into machine learning and AI. It's not going to be enough demand and people will rush into it like it's just another gold rush and they're going to find that either it's not for them or that there aren't that many companies that are hiring for these roles. Now of course everybody anticipates that the AI engineer is going to be the one role that can absorb all of these people that up until now just did good work but they did that good work in a narrow area in the market. But it cannot really absorb all of these business analysts all of these data analysts and all of these web developers and all of these jobs. Because if you just add AI in front of it, it won't really make it a new job because everybody is already using it or will use AI in order to increase their productivity. So it might be a differentiator now, but that gap closes relatively quickly, especially for this type of jobs. I really think that people are incapable of anticipating this normally. And as AI development accelerates exponentially, it's going to be impossible to predict. So saying that these are the top jobs is a safe bet because they don't really know. And to be honest, I love PBD's video on the AI revolution. It's well researched and it includes a lot of sources like the World Economic Forum, McKinsey and Goldman Sachs. But all of these reports were probably made by some junior analysts and signed off by management without any in-depth thinking. So I can't really take them too seriously. All of these reports are usually just saying things that people are already seeing in the market and they just project what's already been happening to continue happening in the future. They just show these big numbers, you know, like 85 million jobs will be replaced by AI by 2025. And by 2030, at least 14% of employees globally might need to change their careers due to robotics and AI advancements. To be fair, there's truth to this because all of these office jobs are going to suffer great changes as we get these productivity increases from AI. But the quick developments that we see can change things a lot because there's always a supply and demand truth to everything. Because if companies automate everything and they don't really need people, then eventually people won't be able to afford or even be interested in buying what these companies are selling. So you see, you need people on both sides in order for the economy to work. Because if one side is affected for long periods of time, then the other side starts hurting. And if we look at technology, everybody wants to get into technology from the software side, because most of us think of tech jobs as software development and engineering. I also only worked in software engineering in the last decade because it had this continuous growth and I was also very interested in it. But technology refers to innovation that is not just limited to software. And now with the rise of AI and these large language models, I think the software side of technology is actually the most affected. And most probably, it won't really grow as we've been used to it in the last decades. It's funny that these reports show engineering and scientists as the best jobs to have. Maybe now people are just seeing AI everywhere and they just project that it's just going to be the same in the future but I'm not really that sure. Let's look at the top 10 skills that are on the rise according to the World Economic Forum. And the first one is creative thinking. And I think this would be a first that creative thinking is actually on the rise because I think it's increasingly important, but I'm not so sure that the world is moving in the direction of actually empowering creative thinking. And it's the same with analytical thinking because to be fair, analytical thinking is more widespread. But if we look now at how companies are behaving, and the fact that they want people to just follow blindly, I don't really see that the world is encouraging these two skills. Now, let's think about tech, because coding is becoming obsolete in the eyes of so many CEOs. And this is going to lead to traditional software development roles to not get the same level of investment as they did in the last 10 years. And the reason is that they're needed less and less. And the vast majority of developers have already moved on, you know, from writing code to actually managing applications and cloud infrastructure. So now we all just need to leverage cloud services that we have very little insights into how they actually work and their intricacy. So what we're actually doing, we're just learning definitions and step-by-step -step instructions on how to connect various tools together. And it's still learning, right? But the creative aspect and the analytical components are actually missing. We're not really learning properly. We're just doing as the documentation tells us and we know very little about how these systems actually work. 
And this is something that I often think about, and that's why I created getthatbash.com. Getthatbash.com is a learning platform that helps you prepare for cloud certification exams. It's currently in beta, and we offer both practice exams and AI assistance to help you learn faster. Check it out as I love your feedback. Our goal is to help you achieve your goals. Now let's look at the next top skills. Technological literacy, curiosity and lifelong learning, resilience, flexibility and agility, system thinking, motivation and self-awareness, and talent management. But is motivation a skill or curiosity? I'm not really sure that you can acquire these skills from the outside because they're defined from within you. But I agree that all of them are important traits that more and more people need to have. But all of this requires us to have some sort of reason in order to be motivated and curious. You know, we need to be curious about stuff and we need to be motivated in order to achieve that greatness. Because if all we do is just configure and I don't know, like just set up various services without actually understanding how they work, there's going to be very little motivation, you know, for a new software engineer to dive into it. If all you do is just try to reverse engineer by prompt engineering and then trying to figure out how to best ask questions to an opaque system, I'm not really sure how motivating that job will be. And the great point that PBD is making is the need for problem solving skills and for teamwork. And both are missing from these reports. And I think they're crucial, you know, because what I see with a lot of new developers, and I'm sure that you can extend this to other domains as well. People really lack the capacity to think thoroughly. They're more prone to just follow orders and what the best practices are. They're not really thinking outside of the box anymore. Maybe they don't really have any incentive, you know, to think creatively because creativity is not really rewarded anymore. We live in a time where everybody's confused, you know, about how things are, you know, and where they're actually going. And it makes them fearful because clients aren't that eager now to spend as much, you know, because they're really, really cautious about where things are going. And also companies are feeling it and they're also not really sure what to do. So these consultancies, these consultancies that are pushing these AA reports, do you think they know more? They have no idea either, but they're putting things out there, big numbers, you know, to get your attention. But regardless of this, if your business doesn't improve with these times, your clients are gonna go someplace else once things become clear. So if we learn something from this, is that we need to learn and we need to constantly be improving. Because as long as you're learning and you're trying to stay ahead of the game, you don't really have to worry about being replaced. But the big differentiator, the big differentiator here will be human skills, soft skills and communication skills. Because these are the big winners here because people are just gonna want to be around other people regardless of how much technology we use. We all want to be around other people. And maybe this is gonna create a huge opportunity for people that choose not to just follow these trends. But regardless, we all need to get back to being more human rather than just being driven by these algorithms and by technology. Because only then we're gonna be able to leverage them where they're actually needed.